morning, everyone, and uh, welcome this morning to our worship service and worship time here at Center City Baptist Church. <coughs> it's good to have all of you here. Let me uh, make mention of the fact that uh, George, that wasn't George singing, was it? What? He's not back here. Anyway, George is here, and He'll update you later on on all the prayer requests uh, that we have, including these two. But uh, Leslie Mann, in fact, is uh, uh, Sherry, is in the hospital this morning as she had uh, knee surgery, yep. hip surgery, yep. hip surgery done and she is still in the hospital at this time and uh, but again George will update you on all of these including Trissa Bennett that's uh, Cora's grandmother and uh, Trissa was in a horrible accident yesterday afternoon <coughs> uh, and got rear-ended by a pickup, or by a truck, and that threw her in the path of another truck. And uh, I think they have said that she is uh, critical, but stable. So I guess it means that uh, you know, hopefully she makes it. But if you would pray for Trissa Bennett, and pray for both of the uh, mans as a very, very, very difficult situation for the uh, two of them. Good to have you at church this morning. And uh, I'm looking around and I see no one else but George. Uh, George, we'll turn it over to you. Well, I've got a scripture to read here to begin with. Psalms 57, verses 8 and 9 say, Awake, my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the people. Now, let's do that. Let's all I invite you to stand, and we'll sing hymn number 113, just over in the glory land. We'll sing... <laughs>
Hymn number 112, Dancing <coughs> Over the Hilltop. in the light. We'll sing all verses.
is gifted in other ways, I'm going to do all eight of them in about ten minutes. No sense wasting time. Get it over with. So this is Jesus talking, and he used eight I am statements in the Bible simply to prove that the one who was walking around saying it in the New Testament was the same one who said it in the Old Testament. That's it. A lot of people got upset with him. Lots of people got upset with him. And so this morning, knowing what I've told you already, let's focus on the eighth. First is in John. In fact, it is, let me tell you, the first seven are in John. So turn to John, and you find it in chapter 6 and verse 35. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. The Bible, oh, by the way, he was. The 
that's proved over and over again. The Bible says that in the beginning, all things were created through Jesus. All plant life was created. All animal life was created. We would have nothing to sustain us today in 2023 if it weren't for Jesus. By the way, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And interestingly enough, a town known as a place of bread. He was the bread that came from the city of bread. And that bread of Jesus can satisfy you and satisfy me and can satisfy all of our needs. Second one is John 8, 12. John 8, 12, then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. Someone once said, someone very skillful said that life is about <coughs> light and dark. And that's it. Life is about the light and the dark. Life involves conflict between Jesus, who is good, and the dark, controlled by those in evil powers. Evil is darkness. <coughs> evil is shutting out the opportunity to see or know what is good. But Jesus brings the light and he points the way to God. Always has, always will. He brings light and life to sinners. Some of these statements are so simple, I feel like I ought to camp out. But I'm not going to camp out. It's that simple. I mean, what kind of an explanation would you like? That's it. Very simple. He brings life and life to other people. This is and always has been a dark world that we live in. The darkness of sin surrounds us. Surrounds us. But Jesus, all through the New Testament of the Bible, invites us to come out of the darkness. And Jesus gives everyone the power, according to the Bible, to walk in his light. Third one, John 10, 7. And then Jesus said to them again, most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. I'm the door. In other words, Jesus is the door to God's pasture. He's the door to a godly life. He's the door for our forgiveness. He's the door to life. He's the door to heaven. A lot of people try a lot of different doors seeking the same thing. Seeking the same thing. You know, there are a lot of churches around that aren't Baptist. Right there, there's a Methodist. We have all kinds of denominations in this town, this little area called Goldthwaite. All kinds of different churches. And so a lot of people try a lot of different things. <coughs> There's the religious door. Baptism doors. 
communion doors, church doors, money doors, good deed doors, cult doors. We have all of them. My simple theory is this. I think he has so many doors in areas as small as this that it gets very, very confusing. Upsets a whole lot of people. Read your Bible. As far as I know, most religions haven't rewritten it yet. Read your Bible. Look at what it says and then do what it says. It's not real hard. Not real hard. But all of these doors that I mentioned a moment ago failed. They fail because Christ alone is the door. And I think our job is to try as hard as we can to get everybody in the same door, the right door. Number four, John 10, 11. <clears throat> Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. What does the good shepherd do? Well, the Bible says that he speaks to his sheep. The Bible says that he leads his sheep. The Bible says that he goes before his sheep. The Bible says that he gives eternal life to his sheep. You see what all of this has in common? Yeah, it's Jesus and Jesus and Jesus and Jesus. But eventually what human beings have to do is realize that they're his sheep. We are his sheep. You want a real peace? Put yourself in the hands of the Good Shepherd. Yeah. Next, John 11, 25. I've lost count. John 11, 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus was raised from the dead. And he became a way of resurrection for those who trust in him. No resurrection or eternal life exists without Jesus. Do you get that? No resurrection, no life exist without Jesus. But time is no barrier to the one who has the power of resurrection and life. And Jesus throughout the Bible promises, promises life that lasts. In other words, life that's eternal. All it takes, all it takes is complete faith in Jesus Christ. That's it. That's all it takes. Complete faith in Him. And then John 14, 6. I know this one. I know it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life, 
no one comes to the Father except through me. People get so totally out of bounds. I always just send them to John 14 and 6. This is Jesus writing, I am the way. I am the truth. I am life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's it. That's it. The Bible says that he is the way. Not one way. Not many ways lead to God. He's the truth. Jesus says, here's the way. And it is the truth. Listen to what I'm saying. I think it's also worth noting that you can't just follow what Jesus did and go to heaven. You want eternal life? You want eternal life? Jesus is the way. There is no other way. None whatsoever. Can you imagine God looking down and watching Donna down here building a an ark? There's probably a better version of that here in the room, but I can't think of it right now. But after so many years of building that ark, wouldn't it be refreshing just to hear someone say, hey, cut it out. Stop that. That's ridiculous. I told you. What did I say? I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. John 15, 1, Jesus said, I am the true vine. I'm the true vine. The vine provides nourishment for its branches. Jesus is our source of life. The vine feeds us so we can grow in God. He abides in us as we abide in him. And to abide in Christ means what? Means you love him. You love him. That's why you abide in him. That's seven. I need one more. And so we leave the book of John. Number eight is Revelation 1. Eight. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Is that powerful or what? The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. What Jesus is saying is I'm A to Z. I'm A to Z. I'm all you need. All you need. Every desire and need can be expressed in the alphabet. So what's your problem today? Got the whole alphabet. S-I-N. Got it covered. 
F E A R. Got it covered. D O U B T. Got it covered. You know what I love to do? I love to give all my sins to Jesus. And I think to myself, he's going to be horrified, going to be petrified. Never is. He just says, I've got it. You live your life for me as best you can. I have all of your sins. They're all covered. All of them. is he he's in control of everything he is the great I am God who became a man and I'm so thankful maybe you are too You see, I'm not good enough to be with God, but Jesus is. I'm not strong enough to be with God, but Jesus is. I'm not clean enough to be with God, but Jesus is. I'm not disciplined enough to be with God, but Jesus is. I'm not righteous enough to be with God, but Jesus is. You see, I don't have to be any of those things None of us do. None of us do. We just have to be with Jesus. That's it. That's it. I don't care how many Billy Graham type people are in heaven. I don't know how many relatives I have in heaven. You see, I don't know who's up there. I'm not sure all the apostles made it. I guess they did. I don't know how many great preachers are up there. And I read about all the people in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't know for a fact that Nathaniel's up there, or Abram's up there, or Abraham is up there. know this much if I'm in the presence of one of those people I may or may not be okay if I'm with Jesus I am okay I just have to be with a great I am. If somebody questions that, just tell them to turn to John and start reading. I love the great I am. Let's pray. Lord, thank you.
for the opportunity you've given me today. To truly look at you and be able to see exactly what you are. You are the great I am. Doesn't matter what we're talking about. I am the bread. I am the light. I am the door. I'm the good shepherd, I'm the resurrection, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, I am the true vine. All I can do as a preacher is just say it over and over and over again. I am. Service.